two of testimony begins in just a few hours in the Kim Potter trial. The first witness called by the prosecution was Katie Bryant, who's Dante Wright's mom. She shared a little about Dante as a son and a father, but also explained in detail what happened the day her son was killed. Brian says that Dante left the house to get his car washed. About a half hour later, he called his mom to say that he had been pulled over by police. He asked, you know, if he was in trouble. I said, no, I, you hadn't done anything wrong. Um, and he just sounded really nervous. But I reassured him that it would be okay. So after that call, Katie Bryant told the jury how she was on a FaceTime call when she heard and saw Dante after he was shot. She says she then rushed to the scene to see her son, and this is video that was shared in court. They pulled him over, and he was, he said, Mom, don't go I said, oh, no, they asked him to get out of the car. He got out of the car, and they said, wait, stop, stop. They said, stop. And then she goes, and then they shot him, and he fell. So after Dante's mom took the stand, prosecutors called Brooklyn Center officer Anthony Lucky, who was partner up with Potter that day. They played for the jury multiple body camera videos, including one after the shooting where Potter is clearly distraught. Let's turn right now to criminal defense attorney Joe Tamburino, who is not affiliated with this case, but is providing analysis for us. Uh, Joe, obviously a, a lot of emotional video yesterday in court. Good morning. A lot of emotional video, a lot of emotional testimony. Uh, we had the mom, Ms. Bryant, talking, and you couldn't help but feel the loss for her. And then we got into Officer Lucky. So it was a lot of testimony yesterday that was important. Joe, anything stand out to you as something new that maybe we didn't know or didn't quite fully have the scope of before uh, we saw yesterday's testimony? Yes, two things. Uh, number one is that there are a lot of videos that we haven't seen yet. All of these videos seem to come from body-worn cameras. Obviously, body-worn camera videos are part of the investigation and are kept private till the trial happens, so there's going to be more to come. And the second thing we learned is that Officer Potter had never used her firearm or her taser on the job. This was the first time. Those were significant developments. Why is it important, Joe, hmm. that she had never used her gun or her taser? Because they're going to be able to argue that she's a person who uses de-escalation, that she's not a person that immediately goes to her weapon or her taser. Rather, she tries to resolve conflicts in other ways. But in this situation, they're going to argue most likely she had no choice. You know, the opening statement sort of framed this in a way that we, I, I think, very much expected, where the prosecutors are saying, look, the fact that this was an accident, we're not even arguing it. We know it was an accident. But the reality is this was a betrayal of the badge was the phrase uh, that was used by the prosecution. What, what do you make of that? That was a powerful word, and I am so surprised, quite frankly, it didn't draw an objection. Because as we all know, character evidence is not admissible in court. You can't call someone a bad person or a good person. You can say they're peaceful. You could say they're law-abiding. The prosecutor used a number of important terms. She said it was a betrayal, a violation of ethics. It didn't draw an objection, so it came into the court. I do wonder, Joe, we, we so rarely see these videos, I mean, obviously, as more police officers are wearing them, but then the aftermath of what happened there, what kind of impact might this have on the jury? Because they'll, I assume they'll continue to play them as the more of the use of force experts and the psychologists come into play, too. You're right. And what you look for is aftermath. Uh, for instance, prosecutors many times will argue the consciousness of guilt, meaning look what happened after the incident. Uh, maybe the guy was trying to hide the money or hide the drugs, as an example. In this case, the defense is going to be using that. They're going to be saying, look what happened immediately after the incident. She was hysterical, distraught, couldn't control herself, extremely remorseful. So the defense is going to try to use it to their benefit. All right, Joe Tamburino, testimony getting underway in about uh, two hours mm -hmm. now. We'll look for your analysis on CBSN Minnesota with Frank Vassalero. Thanks, Joe.